Aerodynamic improvements made from the United States to Cyprus. Obviously along this region of the Great Lakes, there's a massive turbulence area, as well as the Gulf of Mexico causes a diffuser that is way too large. If you want to actually improve the aerodynamics of the United States, you need to have a larger intake, smoothen out the under tray, as well as have a nice, long, shallow spoiler for made longer and slimmer to reduce the frontal area. That is key. The island of Cyprus out here literally looking like a race car. Meanwhile, the US is just a giant van. Obviously, there is zero aerodynamics with this thing. What were the founding fathers thinking? We have aerodynamics. Now can we see hydrodynamics? Just in case, you know, the sea level gets too high. I'm going to assume that places like Chile, if you rotate it the right way, or even the island of Cuba are basically the most aerodynamic countries on Earth. This little high gust of wind might fly these things off the map. How much land would Russia get if it took an equal percentage of Ireland? In green, we have the land controlled by Ukraine, and in red, we have the land occupied by Russia. It is almost a perfect 17% right now. So if we were to apply that same percentage on the island of Ireland, what would it look like? Ah, so 17% of Russian-controlled Ireland would look something like this. That seems awfully weird. Something feels a little familiar about this. I just can't put my finger on it, but I feel like I've seen this before. You think the British would be able to help us jog our memory a little bit? Really makes you think. You can sail from the UK to Italy, then Italy to the UK in a perfectly straight line. This is an absolutely revolutionary discovery from the geography community, even though I think he did have to delete some Greek islands or two. I don't think the Turks would have a problem with that. They probably actually have bigger fish to fry with this image. Here's another one, but this one's a little bit out of date. You used to be able to sail in a perfectly straight line from France to Spain. This was about 200 so years ago, but man, this used to be so great. Could you imagine how great of a place the world could be if France and Spain were right next to each other? other like this? I don't think the world is ready for these two to be that close. Yo guys, what is this massive freaking peninsula called that's attached to Europe? And for some reason, even Google doesn't have the answers. Whenever I Google biggest peninsula in the world, it's something weird. How could it be the Arabian Peninsula if the peninsula I'm talking about it has the Arabian Peninsula in it? it? Just doesn't make any sense. I need answers immediately. Yo guys, how is it possible that there are several countries in Europe with the exact same shape? They're not just the same shape, they're the the same size as well. What are the chances that Andorra, Monaco, Liechtenstein, San Marino, the Vatican City, and Malta even are all the same? What's really impressive is they decided to put a perfectly matched circle shape in the middle of this Mediterranean Sea. It's easy to just draw the borders in a circle. A lot harder to put those circles out in the water. Those European map makers sure are talented. Here's my solution to the Chinese Taiwan problem. Instead of two Chinas, we now have one and a Chinese sea. I think this pretty much fixes everything. It's really that simple. And a lot of places are going to be able to benefit from this, like Mongolia, Kazakhstan, a lot of the other Central Asian nations. They now get to be coastal nations. They're no longer landlocked. I say at the very least, let's hold it to a vote in the UN. There's definitely going to be some takers. A guide to understanding Central Asia. We have Kazakhstan, which is a Russian-style dictatorship. Kyrgyzstan, which is a Venezuelan-style dictatorship. Uzbekistan, which is a Saudi Arabian-style dictatorship. Turkmenistan, which is a North Korean-style dictatorship. Finally, Tajikistan, which is a Chinese-style dictatorship. As you can see, there's a wide variety in this region of the world. They're all practicing such diverse governments here. Pretty interesting to watch it play out. The world, when you tell them, you put mayo on your fries. In green, all the countries that say, it's pretty great, isn't it? And in red, oof yourself. K-Y-S. Seeing as I'm from California, I think you all know my answer to this. You keep that disgusting sauce away from my fried potatoes. Honestly, I'm offended. I'm mad. Why have we allowed the world to get away with this for so long? And what is this article? There's nine types of mayonnaise that are better on fries than ketchup? First of all, mayonnaise is an instrument. It should go nowhere near fries. The four horsemen of no data in Europe. Of course, as we talked about, all the circle nations. And there's the former Yugoslavia territory as well as Albania. Oh, I see what you did with Kosovo. Then there's Belarus, Ukraine, Moldova, and... Where's the fourth? Finally, Georgia, Armenia, and Azerbaijan. When it comes to data maps of Europe, these are the regions that sometimes or very often are left off. I think especially these two. These two are pretty popular. This one too, sometimes here. Technically, Greenland is a part of Denmark, which means it's European territory, and that always has no data. Let's play a little game where you guys try to figure out where I live based off of only a single map. This is the only one I'm gonna give you. Now try to guess. I know 
know it's going to be difficult, but you know, just take some shots in the dark. Clearly the answer here is not very obvious. Sometimes you just have to do deductive reasoning and then you can kind of figure it out. Here are all the countries I've eaten KFC in. In green, no, but I live here and foreign food chains are stupidly expensive and local alternatives are much better. And in red, also no. In gray, of course, no data. I'm not exactly sure about KFC. I don't know. I like how accurate this map actually is because he can confirm like the places that are really far away from his home of Pakistan. Yeah, he probably has not eaten KFC here. Somalia, Armenia, Vietnam. I've definitely not eaten KFC here, but you know, the neighboring countries, it's possible. It's possible he's strolled over and accidentally got himself some fried chicken from India. There's crazier things that have happened in this world. So I'm glad that there isn't a definite answer. Sometimes people sleepwalk. The bottom 12 states to live in, indicated by purple. I've seen several maps showing the top 12 states to live in. Didn't realize these places were so low though. It's actually quite sad. I need to turn my life around and get on up somehow. I like how Hawaii isn't included because they are shown here at the top. Even though this state, I think in terms of latitude, is the most south since... I mean, yeah, you have to look at a globe to see that though. Hawaii is literally the state closest to the equator. So yeah, it is the lowest. And people like to talk about how nice it is. I had a map of the US and a map of Europe with a hammer. Here are the results. As you can see, I didn't completely shatter the US. There are still some pretty big chunks there. I'm gonna suggest if you wanna buy one of these purely off of durability, I'd recommend this nation because Europe is pretty much done for. Total. Just one hammer strike and I turned Germany back into the Holy Roman Empire. How am I supposed to read this even? Just like phones, sometimes maps fall out of your pocket and hit the floor. You don't want it to completely shatter so you can't even see it anymore. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Here are all the countries that fit inside of Monaco. It seems like we can fit about eight or nine Chinas inside of Monaco, the European city-state. That is absolutely incredible because I always thought China was like the fourth largest nation on earth. Monaco Monaco apparently is a lot bigger than we're expecting. Wait, I thought Monaco was also just a perfect circle that matched the Vatican and San Marino and my proposal for the fifth partition of Poland. Poland has been partitioned several times throughout history. We might as well do it again. We'll give the southeast side to Honduras, the Democratic Republic of Congo and Albania, the eastern side to Bosnia, Ukraine, Macedonia. We got Georgia, Paraguay, Cyprus getting stuff out because we don't want Cyprus to just remain an island. No. Same goes for Iceland or Islandia, Serbia, Mongolia, and Luxembourg should also get stuff. Something tells me if you ask the polls, they are definitely up for this as well. It's better than some of the other partitions they've been a part of. Most Americans don't realize how small Texas actually is. Not even the size of Manhattan in New York City. Pathetic. Tired of all those inaccurate meme maps that put like the entire solar system, the Milky Way galaxy inside of Texas. It's actually the smallest state in the union. They should just call it a city. My opinion on all the countries in the world. I'm from Vietnam. In gray, we have hell holes. And in blue, the greatest country on earth. This actually makes a lot of sense coming from a person out of Vietnam. Everyone knows the Vietnamese absolutely love Kazakhstan. They all move there. It's it's extremely popular place. I'm pretty sure Vietnam sings glorious Kazakhstan national anthem every morning as well. People say the U.S. is bad at geography. Meanwhile, they can't even name half of these states. Yeah, like maybe they know California, Texas, Florida, and New York, but I guarantee you they've never heard of Flatfield. Or how about Loa? Maybe Iowa, but not Loa. I was like 26 when I found out about the state of Scott. Fortunately, I'm still learning the Canadian provinces. Don't quiz me on them. It's the unorganized part that really confuses me. Here we have a map of South America with one key difference. Oh yeah, that's right. It's epic. Finally, epic America. It's about time. Took so long to get rid of all those non-epic countries. Finally, I can die in peace. Contrary to popular belief, you can actually set sail from Mexico to 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 Mexico in a perfectly straight line. Isn't that incredible? What? other place in the world could do this. It really just shows how fantastic Mexico actually is. Someone's got to try this journey. It's only 6,500 kilometers. Who wouldn't want to do it? Geography, the art of mapping Georgia. This actually does look like possibly a modern art piece. I might have to like do something similar, throw it up on like a white wall somewhere. People will be scratching their heads for sure. Talking about how great this piece is. Oh, whoops. I almost forgot about this. The Georgia that's always forgotten about, including by me, apparently. It's because they didn't include the full name. I always forget that it's also a 
a third Georgia in the world because I'm usually focused on the South sandwich part there's that it's named Georgia I want to know about the sandwiches tell me where they are this person talking to chat GPT this is awful it doesn't look like Europe at all I apologize that the previous ASC2 art did not meet your expectations here's another attempt at creating an ASC2 art outline of Europe oh wow that is totally not terrifying at all the art is very simplified outline of Europe represented by a rectangle with rounded corners the O symbol represents the general location of the Mediterranean Sea and the periods are the Balkan and Baltic areas yes thank you chat GPT I can I can definitely see that gotta delete this AI it's out of control. Europe, if it was a creepy pasta painting. A map of Vietnam in the 1960s, according to South Park. We all know about Ho Chi Minh City, and then also up above that is Jungle Land. There's the Mystical Land, which housed a lot of the Viet Cong. Of course, China's up here, along with the uh, Alp Mountain Range, Wilderness Land, as well as, uh, we can't forget about Future Land, where we put a little Disneyland park for a brief second there. We were hoping that was gonna help us win the war, but I, I guess not. If only we would've have won that could you imagine the amazing pastas and pizzas that would have came out of this land getting hungry just thinking about it since we're just throwing Italy around everywhere how would I offer a trade deal we get the delicious culinary arts while you receive well I think you already know what you're about to receive but we are gonna throw Cuba in to sweeten the pot something about this image doesn't feel right like I feel like I need to blur it or something I, I don't know I, I just I need to look away what is this region in red called basically the United States but without Montana Idaho Wyoming Utah Colorado Alaska Hawaii Tennessee North Carolina South Carolina Mississippi Alabama Georgia or Florida I'm just really confused I, I know it has to have a name though please someone help me my geography test is tomorrow yo guys I just made a revolutionary discovery Denmark is basically fat Batman um, trying to pick up a fish. Yo! I never noticed this before. I love it. Map if I spilled mustard on it versus map if I spill ketchup on it. I have a lot of questions. For some reason, this mustard you've bought is so expired it is turned blue and it's acidic enough to burn off Alaska and Hawaii. It probably is not safe to consume, but I'm not gonna tell you what to do with your life. You do whatever you want. I'd prefer if you just spilled ketchup on my United states but you know i get it accidents happen a map of all the states where flamethrowers are illegal there's only one place that wants to take away your freedom and to think it's called maryland doesn't sound very merry to me <laughs> actually this might not even be accurate the only state in the union that doesn't allow flamethrowers is california and i'm totally not surprised we never have anything fun here uh, apparently maryland might also have a law against it well when i move from california i definitely will not be going to maryland I can tell you that much right now and big thanks to my patrons. Help, this is the real Drew. I was kidnapped and that's the Drew's imposter. Argentinian the slow, grandpa. depressing portal Chang and Chang and Chang and Chang and Chang. Oh, right follow us. Carol Dollars is a lot. John Gabriel. Kids know his best girl. Fresh. Robert and Ryan. The great Ralph. The Polish. I kidnapped Drew. His ransom is five filet of fish. And why am I doing this? 308 Negro Arroyo Lane.